because some people they put too much work into it. Mm-hmm. The goal is really just have that self healing, that self awareness and knowledge and confidence, and live out your truth, your authenticness, mm-hmm. and you'll be seen through that. I feel like when I just became comfortable with being me, yeah, not trying to be anybody else, not trying to sound like anybody else, understanding my message, everything, my purpose is mine, it's God given, and I walk in that. And when I do that, the audience comes. You've been waiting for Everything that you've been praying for You've heard love You're gonna heal and come back strong I know what you got, got, got you Your girls, we're here, we're with you This is your battle now I know you're about to come back battle God, don't miss, you're all here This is it Yeah, 13 years married, 20 years, years married. together. Since high school. Yes. So since the seventh grade? When did y'all meet? No, we met 10th, maybe ninth grade. Ninth grade. He said, yeah, no, no, no. My bad. Ninth grade. I love it. That's so sweet. Everybody wants that story. Yeah. I, I just have it. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when everybody wants that story, what do you say to them? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Well, I just share my story. Mm. So granted, we met really young. Yeah. um, But I do remember, you know, being 14, 15, 15 years old, had a few boyfriends. And Mm -hmm. I realized real quick uh, that these little boys was about nothing. Yeah. (laughs) And um, honestly, I I was, you know, I was fresh in my faith. Mm -hmm. You know, my faith journey started when I was 15. Right. Mm -hmm. Not too long before I met him. And I remember just being a young girl. I was actually talking to one of my best friends at the time. And we were in um, the hallway in high school. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I said, you know, whenever I get a boyfriend again, I want us to be able to hold hands and that'd be powerful. Mm-hmm. At 15, you said At 15. Because wow. by then, you know, I had my little boyfriends, mm-hmm. whole trip. <laughs> but I knew what I wanted and what I didn't want. And so I remember having that conversation with her. And I was like, I don't want my boyfriend to expect anything out of me besides holding my hand. You know, just really having that friendship. Mm -hmm. And a couple months later, I met him. Wow. And eventually that moment happened where we held hands. Just divine. I was like, wow, God. (laughs) Some people say, you know, about the first kiss. Some people say, you know, when you look in their eyes. Some people say they have to make love. You said, I want to hold his hand. Yeah. That's huge. I love that. Five kids. Five children. How old? They are ages five, seven. I got to think about this. 10, 12, and 14. Yeah. Everybody wants that. Tell us the story. <laughs> uh, so we got together, mm-hmm. <laughs> enjoyed each other, mm-hmm. and, and a baby came out of it. And mm-hmm. then we got married. Um, and then, you know, we had a girl first. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted a boy. Yeah. He was The boy was number four. Wow. Okay, so the so story you was it. we kept going to get the boy, mm-hmm. got the boy, thought we was finished, and one more time. And that's when we had our daughter. So we had four girls, one boy. I've heard that so many times. Like, we kept going until. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. So I'm so excited to hang out with you today because there are so many women. And I wanted to hear your love story first. I know that was very selfish. That was all for me. Okay. <laughs> because I love a love story and everybody does. Mm-hmm. And we don't hear enough beautiful ones. So I just wanted to make sure that we heard your love story first. But so there are so many women who have stories in general Mm -hmm. and I watch how, you know, your passion and tell me how, if I'm off, but is to life coach and to walk people sort of through life. Is that what it means when you're in the life coaching space, when you're in the therapy space, when you're in the space where you're watching people's story? Uh, Does it mean I'm going to walk with you? Does it mean I'm going to see you? Mm -hmm. Does it mean I'm going to love you through this? What does that mean to be? It's it's all the above. Mm -hmm. So as a life coach, right, we're there to support. We're there to listen. We're there to encourage, to empower. And I'll say my life coaching is a little different because it's backed up by... It's backed up by the Holy Spirit, long mm-hmm. story short, where I use my spiritual giftings as well as, you know, the teaching and training to become a certified coach. 
And so I take both worlds together. And so when I meet with someone, you know, sometimes it is just listening and pulling things out and asking them questions and helping them discover their truth or discover the question they may came to me to answer. Mm -hmm. And I pull it out of them. Um, Sometimes it's always support. It's always love. There's been times where I felt led to like, hey, let's just be still. Let's meditate. Let's pray. You know, I kind of just let let it flow. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Chrisette Michelle. I'm an R&B singer. I've won Grammys. I've been at the top of the charts, um, and it was for R&B music. I was raised in the church. I got signed out of college. Uh, After all of the music, there was this crazy thing that happened in my life where I felt like the whole world canceled me out and decided I was no longer worthy, decided I was no longer allowed. Um, They thought that they could take my gifting and my talent away. And so here I am now in the middle of my life, right? And I'm looking at all the dreams that I have now. And I don't look like I used to look. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't dress like I used to dress. There's a world watching me. Mm -hmm. How many women tell you they feel that way? Well, the world part, I don't get that part often. Um, So do people who are on social media feel like a lot of people are watching? At times, Mm -hmm. at times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I find that a lot of women feel like not enough people are watching, Mm -hmm. that they are hidden, that they don't have value, that they don't have purpose. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I have to speak to that purpose, Mm -hmm. you know, and we talk about that worth Mm -hmm. because when you understand your worth and you understand your value, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll have those mental days where you're off, but knowing your worth gives you your strength and Mm -hmm. your confidence. So sometimes I have to speak to that. So you feel like some women feel unseen. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are they doing to try and be seen? Or is that the goal? What's the goal when you feel unseen? Or a goal that you hear often? So the goal is, because some people, they put too much work into it. Mm -hmm. The goal is really just have that self-healing, that self-awareness and knowledge and confidence and live out your truth, your authenticness. Mm -hmm. And you'll be seen through that. I feel like when I just became comfortable with being me, yeah. not trying to be anybody else, not trying to sound like anybody else, understanding my message, everything, my purpose is mine. It's God given. And I walk in that. And when I do that, the audience comes. Do you create a message? Do you hear your message? Do you find your message? Do you have an experience and then it becomes your message? How do you cultivate a message? What makes it authentic? All the above. So Mm -hmm. a lot of times how I'm very faith driven. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, whether it's an idea or a message or a word or a revelation, it was divine where, Mm -hmm. you know, either I heard it. Sometimes it's through meditation. Sometimes it's through scriptures and studying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's through experience Mm -hmm. where that testimony became a message. Mm -hmm. What's a practical step you can give a woman to create her message? There's a woman watching you right now. They're looking at your social media. They're seeing that you understand marketing. They're seeing that you understand how to get a point across. What's a practical step you can give a woman to create her message or to experience or share her message? Like how do, there's somebody praying, Lord, what am I supposed to say to the world? Right. How do you help her? We'll start with your story. Mm -hmm. Your story is your truth. Mm -hmm. Your story is... You know, on marketing terms, your story is your promotion, mm. right? But it's your truth, it's your promotion, it's your real life. Mm-hmm. And you pull from your story the message, right? Everything I do is faith-led. But mm-hmm. if I will tell you my story, my story will start when I finally gave my life to Christ. Mm-hmm. When I was in church on that altar and I was like, man, I just, I'm young, but I know this is not how my life's supposed to be. And when I made that choice, when I made the decision, there, there's my journey, my message started then. Mm-hmm. So what's your message? It's been a lot, <laughs> a few messages, but I was saying this season, my message is peace and purposeful living. Mm-hmm. And that, what does that look like for you? Peace, for me, peace looks like no more overwhelm. I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm comfortable with my life. I'm content. I'm not chasing. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be like anybody else. I'm just, I'm Martina. I'm exactly who God created me to be. Mm-hmm. And I live in that. And my life becomes my own personal experience and I share that. So it's definitely the peace and purposeful living ties up into that as well. Mm -hmm. It does. I hear a lot of people in my DMs ask about like purposeful living and they'll say, what's my purpose? Or I don't know my purpose. It might answer that question personally. Or if I'm sharing it with somebody, everybody has the same exact purpose, which is to love. That's how I Mm -hmm. see it. Well, how do you describe purpose and what purpose is? Does everyone have their own separate one? How do you answer questions like that if you have them? Yeah. So purpose, I will say the foundation is love, Mm -hmm. right? We operate out of love. 
But I feel like our purpose is tied to is tied to our anointing, our gifting, our skill sets, the way we think, our character, our personality. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> our anointing, all the things. Um, so your pur- our your, okay, so your purpose is tied to all of the things. I do because mm-hmm. every day I live out, those things come out in in it. Mm-hmm. So so many things come out. So when I when I hear what you're saying, I think about what it means to be spiritual. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm Christian. I'm faith based. I was raised in a church, saved that night, speaking in songs, fell out on the Holy Ghost, got mm-hmm. back up and went into life. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when I think about the spiritual in that context, yeah. before I came here as a person, mm-hmm. God had ideas about me. Yeah. And those ideas were in my spirit yeah. because of his sovereign plan for himself in the world. Right. So I didn't get a say on how I am as spirit, right? Mm. What I got to say on was what I do with spirit, if that makes sense. So I get get back onto the planet, right? Mm -hmm. From wherever I came from. And yeah, and enter this world. And I learn my spirit on the journey. I learn, okay, what what is it that you want to see there? What is it that I'm looking at here? And as you get closer and closer to understanding the spirit space or God, you Mm -hmm. begin to say, I see you showing up in my life. How do I touch that? How do I partner with that? How do I communicate that with other people? And then you get here and you're trying to communicate what the spirit is saying as a human body through English. (laughs) And then they come up with Instagram. Right? (laughs) Right. So, my hope today is that you can talk to us a little bit about what it's like for that journey to resonate on social media. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. That's that's the journey. Well, I want to talk about when you were saying like, you know, before we enter our mother's womb, before we're here on earth, right? And we're in, you know, what we would call heaven, right? In the heavenly realms, right? With the heavenly host, with God, the creator, because we're alive, right? We're predestined. So we're here we're, we're existing before we're here. And I always think of it as we had a divine meeting, right? Whoever it was with, God has a whole hierarchy in heaven. Mm -hmm. So whoever we sat down with and we discussed life, we Mm -hmm. discussed, you know, purpose, you know, what I'm called to do, how I'm going to help. Right. And essentially laid out our path journey into Mm -hmm. the mother's womb. And now we're here. Mm -hmm. And what was the question again? <laughs> so you get here. That's beautiful. You get here onto the planet. You start looking around. Yeah. From the age of one, you've seen, you've, re- you've, you've, you've raised five yeah. children. So I'm guessing that you've seen the process where they first start looking around and being mm-hmm. like, I'm on the planet. <laughs> yeah. This is a whole other place. I have this body. Apparently, I'm supposed to do something with it. And so they start touching things and they start holding things. And you tell them that's a square. I've never been a mom, so I'm not sure how it goes. Mm -hmm. That's a circle. That's red. That's blue. And you give them language, right, right, to be here. They grow up discovering, right? You can tell me if I'm wrong, but they grow up discovering, looking around. They turn 13. You're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. (laughs) From the time you were two to 13, you've discovered more than I expected. And now I have to teach you how to operate outside of this house. Like it's one thing in this house. But when you go outside of this house, there's a whole other place that I that you're going to have to exist in. I see your husband shaking his head like, yes, absolutely. (laughs) Right. And so they pick up the cell phone and they see people branding themselves. They see people deciding who they are. They see people saying, uh, this is my, you know, uh, Instagram name. I wear these colors. These are the colors of my brand. Do you talk much about branding? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how how does somebody come from the spirit space through this life and become a brand? What does that look like for a person? Again, I would say it starts with the story, mm-hmm. your foundation, the why. Mm-hmm. And honestly, even before all the foundational and business terms and stuff like that, mm-hmm. is is one day deciding to download an app and saying I'm going to be bold enough mm-hmm. to even show up, whether it's through pictures or however. Um, and then it's speaking. Mm-hmm. Is showing up and is speaking and is sharing. Yeah. So that's my question okay. is I'm going to pick up this phone. I'm going to see an app and I'm going to be bold. What am I doing when I pick up that? Okay. Let's oh, you step like one. This. Okay. Yeah. I pick up the phone. I look at it. There's an app called Instagram. I download it. I know that I'm something. Mm-hmm. I know that God gave me something. What do I put on? What's my first post? 
So I always say it's introduction because mm-hmm. no matter where you're at in life, even before you discovered your brand or knew you was going to have a brand or that you are a brand. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is Martina. This is where I'm at in this season. This is how I know me mm-hmm. up until this point of my life. I love that. So it's introduction. Introduction is step one. Yeah. And then from there, in my personal journey, I've I've always shared my process. So, you know, I'm a wife, I'm a mother. So even before I was an entrepreneur or a business owner or a coach, I would just share my life, mm-hmm. share my interests, mm-hmm. right? And I grew an audience, a community from that. I connected with women who said, okay, she's a mother. You know, they were able to relate to me and all those good things. And then somewhere along the journey, I had this idea. Mm-hmm. It was just a divine idea. A lot of my ideas are divine. It sure. wasn't something that I had to go work to come up with or re- think really hard to say, hey, I want to do something. What is it? It just naturally flowed into my spirit. Mm-hmm. So I believe God gives us divine downloads. Mm-hmm. So as far as whether it be purpose, assignments, whether it's seasonal, lifelong, he'll give you a divine download. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you share your process of receiving that gift of the mm-hmm. divine download. You share it and you live it out. You work it out. You create it. You brand it. Mm-hmm. You do all the things. But you do that with your community and with your audience. And so that's one thing I've always did. Share my life. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's the takeaway is like, I have this life. I get to, I get this opportunity called social media. Yeah. And I can start off by saying hi. Right. And then this is a bit of my, these are some of the relatable things of my life that yeah. I think maybe somebody else might have experienced too. Yeah. Maybe it's having children. Maybe it's a husband. But whatever your unique, special thing is to you. I like soda. It could start off with anything as long as it's really you. It could, though, actually. Yeah. 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 Right. And just in in sharing your experience, too. Mm -hmm. Right. A little deeper than soda, but you could start there. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I think like for me, even outside of the business realm or just on my personal page, I share a lot of my life. Because I know I'm helping. I know somebody's learning through what I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. Even if we think, oh, that's real practical or basic, somebody is watching and listening and like, man, I I need to implement that in my lifestyle. Like I share a lot of things about mindset. I'm very transparent. I share my struggles, my insecurities. Like I I share a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) on my personal page because my ultimate mission is to help and people to feel comfortable even when your seasons are not cute. Mm -hmm. You know, even when your seasons are not Instagrammable. Mm-hmm. So I, I do a lot of sharing, a mm-hmm. lot of sharing, a lot of storytelling, a lot of this is where I'm at in real life. Yeah. yeah, I've been excited to look at all of your all of your work on the social media space and then outside. A lot of times an introduction happens for some people mm-hmm. on social media. Some people, that's the first time other people are seeing them. So for me, the first time I met you was on Instagram. I didn't know who you I didn't I didn't meet you in high school. Right. I didn't meet you at McDonald's. I didn't meet you at the the grocery store like the first time I saw your face was on Instagram. And the first thing I thought was she can help people. It's the first thing I thought. And a lot of people who are watching me and are watching us even right now are people who said, I'm going to be brave enough to say what it is that I want to do. I'm going to put it out there and somebody might not like it. And so they're trying to navigate or traverse this very scary place where somebody might see it. Do you ever hear people say, I'm petrified that somebody will actually see me? Because you talked about the person who doesn't feel seen. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have clients now who like, I don't want to show my face. Mm -hmm. And so we work on a confidence piece and we work, we get to the root because sometimes why don't you want to be seen? Mm -hmm. Why are you fearful of man? Mm -hmm. I think for me... So I've gotten to a space in my life where I'm very comfortable in me. Mm -hmm. I'm very bold. I'm very confident. Even if I make a mistake, even if I don't pronounce everything perfectly, I'm just comfortable in who I am. Yeah. And mistakes and all. And I think I got there because life. Mm -hmm. Right. I've had the judgments. I've had the gossip towards me. I've had people talk about me and stuff like that. So I've had those moments where I was down and I've had seasons of my life where I say, you know what? I don't do friends no more. Mm. I'm good. Y'all too much. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Y'all too judgmental, you know, all the things. And I really went through a season where I said, I don't do the friends. Um, But I didn't like life like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't like life hiding. I didn't like not sharing my truth. I didn't like giving someone else the power to dim my light. Mm -hmm. I didn't like giving somebody else the power to dim my light. Yeah. I did that for too long. Mm -hmm. So from self-awareness and growth 
and conversations with other life coaches and therapists, and even sometimes just friends, because friends can make a good mentor. Um, I finally got to the place where I am now where, hey, I'm Martina. Yeah. Laws and all. I know I'm going to help you. This is this is I'm helping you in some capacity and I'm going to show up and do that. And I got there by practicing. The first live I did, the first time I spoke, I hated it. Yeah. I was not comfortable with my voice. My hair was not cute. I don't even think my hair is cute right now. But It's gorgeous. <laughs> um, but I, you know, it was just talking to someone, pulling that out of me. Mm-hmm. It's just saying, girl, you better speak. You better share. Yeah. And so sometimes we just need to tell them, girl, you better speak. You better share. Mm-hmm. Don't be scared. Who cares? Everybody's yeah. online looking crazy at this point. So you good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you look gorgeous. Thank you. Your voice is outstanding. I noticed it and said, I see her. And I wanted, if there was anybody else that you wanted to speak to, hopefully that you, I could sh- I could introduce you to somebody else or somebody else could be introduced to you um, because I think that your value is so high and uh, so important. I think that people are looking for someone who's not just into marketing, but is into faith-based marketing i think it's a scary place to traverse for myself okay. for me this person right. sitting in front of you today mm-hmm. um i think that it's petrifying for people to think that you're special but they don't know why mm. i think that's so uncomfortable for somebody to say great job but they don't know yeah. who gave you that gifting who gave it who gave you that because we're in this body yeah Right. And so a lot of times when I heard marketing in the secular world, Mm -hmm. the thing was that'll be eight hundred thousand dollars, too. And it'd be a long list of things. And the thought is, where am I in that? Where's God in that? Yeah. I can't find him in that. I just don't see it. Yeah. The one the the girl who fell out in church at nine years old and gave Mm -hmm. her life to Christ can't see where God is in this world of marketing. Yeah. So let's and, talk about it. Yeah, that's the goal <laughs> is to have that girl who's wondering where's God in marketing. Yeah. And so my joy was to bring in a faith based marketer so that they could understand where God is in marketing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So six figures in a day. Yes, it's here. Right now, this is a real live screenshot that I personally did in my account. Now, I do this live with my people, my people, meaning in my discord that I have. And guess what? I'm not the only one making this type of money. As you see, there are people making two, three, four, five hundred percent with me, right? And what I want you to know is that this is not something that is foreign. It can be done and replicated, not just by me or a couple of people who know what I know. I can teach it to you. So you want to learn what we know? You want to do what we do? I do this live. So I can't even fake it. I do it live every day that the market is open. Come join me. I got you. Well, it's in his word. So even before I got into marketing, or mm-hmm. even I'll, I'll say this first, when I got into business and into entrepreneurship, almost 10 years ago, it was an accident. Mm-hmm. I wasn't looking for, I wasn't seeking to be in it. Um, I think Instagram was around, it was it was new. And during the time, I was actually, I just, we just had our third daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were living in my in-law's basement because we had to move. It was just, it was a lot. Yeah. And I was in a very desperate season of my life. And I had a good resume, mm. but I wasn't getting hired. Okay. And I was like, okay, God, what's good? <laughs> you know, real desperate praying. And so one morning I'm desperate. I'm praying. Had a whole little attitude with God too. And I was like, what are we doing here? Because this is not my portion. This is not abundance. This is not for me. And I remember his spirit just told me to grab the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, bet. I'm going to grab the Bible. Because I knew if God was telling me to grab the Bible, he was about to give me a plan on how to overcome this season, mm-hmm. this broken season, this uncomfortable, just broke season. And so I grabbed my Bible and I remember opening up to the book of Proverbs and I was reading the scripture and I was like, okay, God, this is cool, but this don't sound like nothing that could help. Like I can't do nothing with this scripture. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, I said, man, this sounds like a business. Like this could go towards a business. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I have no experience in business at this time. I'm like, that's not it. So I flipped through the pages, open it up again. I'm like, okay, we got it, God. I know you told me to come read this word. I get to another scripture in the book of Proverbs. And I'm like, why does this sound like a business? Mm. And at the time, it was foreign to me, like that concept of faith and business. I never thought about it. 
And I had a whole little attitude, sat there on the floor in my in-law's basement. And I was like, this ain't it, what are we gonna do? And then I quieted my spirit and I felt led to get my journal. I got my journal, I began to write things down. And from there and in that season, God was revealing how to merge faith and business and mm-hmm. how I can see business in his scriptures. Mm-hmm. So before I even got into marketing, my biggest thing was teaching women how to start, run and maintain a business off mm-hmm. of biblical principles, kingdom sure. principles. Then from there, because I did content creation mm-hmm. and with the realm of social media, that became a form of marketing. Mm-hmm. And I got really, really good at it. And so from there, that's how I got into marketing. So how do you market from a faith perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Off of kingdom principles. If you go through the books, uh, the gospels, mm-hmm. right? In the New Testament. Before I was in market, I remember reading those scriptures and you look at the life of Jesus, the mm-hmm. Messiah, son of God. And I was looking at the things that he was doing. We knew that he was about his father's business. We knew that he had an assignment, right? The Great Commission, all those things. I just saw you light up, by the way. Really? This is your subject, right? This is your jam uh-huh. right here. So, yeah. Yes, okay. okay I'm, I'm, I'm on. Okay, light is on. Good. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was, look, I was studying the life of Jesus, what he did. Mm-hmm. Right. So you'll hear me say stories telling a lot because he always told parables. He told stories that made it relatable for his audience. Mm -hmm. Then you look where he had disciples. The disciples became his team to carry out the gospel. And even when his time on earth was done to this day, we're disciples carrying out the message. Yeah. So I thought about that. I said, okay, got the team, had, you know, has the message. Then I thought about, okay, this is the son of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Prestigious Jesus. But here he is going from town to town, delivering his message because he could have surely made the people come to him. Yeah. And so I just began to just look at his life and I apply that into marketing. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, now we're big on attracting. Right. Mm -hmm. So do all the things so you can attract your audience and fish and five loaves. Yeah. All the things. But I also looked at, okay. Well, what can I do to attract them? Mm-hmm. I can tell my story. Okay. I will have to be bold. I will have to build a team. Sometimes sometime that team is just you and God. Sometimes it's a couple uh, sessions with your business coach or mentor. Mm-hmm. Then you get to your virtual assistant and so on and so forth. But I got into faith-based marketing, again, from the scriptures, looking okay. at the life of Jesus. And I said, okay, how can I take what he did and modernize it? Mm-hmm. So if he was speaking, how can I speak? Instagram, emails, you know, whatever other avenues or platforms. Yeah. So yeah, I really, I really just studied the word, and then eventually I took some classes because mm-hmm. I'm the kind what of. What were person. some of those classes? So I was a part of a nine week entrepreneurial development program mm-hmm. in Camden, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And I say that because at the time when I was going, we had the one car, five children, and the way his work schedule was, and when his class started, it was like he would go straight to work, then come pick up me and the kids, Mm -hmm. take me to class, yeah, and then they would sit in the car and wait for me. (laughs) Wow. So I was really determined to get get that knowledge and information. And what'd you learn? What was the name of some of the classes? Tell us. Um, So that was the name of the class. And basically, we learned about the planning part. We learned about, you know, like how to run a marketing campaign and Mm -hmm. launching. We learned about the numbers. We learned about branding. What are the numbers? What do you mean? Do you mean analytics? What? Yeah, the analytics. Okay. Well, in the money, okay. the money part. I think even in the marketing, the whole point of marketing is so you can make a profit. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of times as believers in business, mm-hmm. we're scared of that part. Mm-hmm. We're good at talking, sharing, and giving Yeah, as we should, Sure, but we're scared of the profit part. Right. And so I think that's another way I help because part of marketing is how can I get my products and services out to the people who I'm called to serve. Mm-hmm. How can they get it? Right? What does it mean to have a marketplace anointing? Is that is that kind of what you're getting at? It's like God is giving me where to place this. Sometimes I talk about kingdom marketing. Yeah. And it's like, is CVS kingdom marketing? Is if if <laughs> if my product is sitting in the store at CVS, say I make makeup or I make lotion. Mm-hmm. If it's sitting in the the lotion section of CVS, is this uh, has God given me an anointing for marketing? Have I figured out something through the wisdom of Christ mm-hmm. uh, that puts my lotion on a shelf? That's a very abstract way when you've come from the sky, yeah. <laughs> the heavenly realm. It's like you're not thinking about the shelving of CVS up no. there, 
right? But God is. Yeah. People don't realize I'm hearing that God is actually thinking through their marketing plan and putting what he gave them onto the shelf at CVS. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. There's definitely an avenue. Mm -hmm. Because typically what happens is someone buys that makeup, that lipstick, right? They'll probably see your face, whether they knew you or not. They'll learn about the brand. If they like it, they'll go to the website. If they go to the website, at some point, they're going to learn about the owner and founder. Mm -hmm. And then when that connection happens, whatever, you know, God has from there. Yeah. But the marketplace anointing for me is there are some people who are called to serve in the mm -hmm. church who they flourish there. I don't. Mm -hmm. I've been in church all my life. I've been always stuck in the ministry of teaching children. Yeah. And I love to teach. Mm -hmm. Right. That's been my ministry. But outside of that, there was no women's ministry or if I was there, they took me out. Yeah. But in marketplace ministry, I was able to have that freedom to not only use or teach not only use my skill sets, but to teach, but to also use my spiritual giftings, mm -hmm. right? We, we talk about the fruit of the spirit. We talk about the gifts of the spirit. So the marketplace anointing to me is I get to take everything that God has given me mm -hmm. and operate that, but within a business realm Got versus it. how a um, pastor would be at a church. I get to take everything God gave me and use it and operate it in the business world. Yeah. I get to take everything God has given me and I, I'm going to say it to here. <laughs> I'm going to take Everything God gave me, everything He gave me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna sit here and make a long list <laughs> of everything I can sing. I am nice. I have some patience, but I need to work on my self control. I'm gonna take a list of everything that God has given me, <laughs> and I have pennies. I have. Um, T-shirts, everything is given me. I have a, you know what, in my basement, I have a little printing press. Um, I have notebooks. I have all these things. I think sometimes people don't realize how yeah. much they have to give. Yeah. And if they look around their house, their apartment, they look inside of their hearts, yeah. they look at the people around them. Sometimes God has given you everything you need to do what he's asking you to do right now. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Would you yeah. agree with that? Yeah. So when you first got started, what was your first business that you started? So mm -hmm. my first business was so my story is always on Instagram. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when it comes to business and entrepreneurship. So my first business was actually a thrift store. OK. So way back when Instagram first started and I and we were broke, broke, but I love to shop. Mm -hmm. So one thing about me and my husband will tell you, I will find a way to shop. Mm -hmm. So even if money's tight, yeah. it's just a free, I just love to shop. Mm -hmm. And so there was a thrift store right around the corner that I think it was like every Tuesday, their shirts were $2. What? Mm -hmm. And yes. you know, you know, some days Goodwill will do a dollar day. But anyway, mm. I was going to the store to shop. And just because the thrift store don't, you know, people think, you know, secondhand is no good. But I used to find some cute stuff. Sure. Some real good stuff. And from there, I started meeting a lot of people. The town we lived in at the time was Glassboro, New Jersey. And so there's, it's a college town. Mm -hmm. So I started to connect with a lot of college students. It was a whole culture. Yeah. It was a whole vibe. Totally. It was a whole different, you know, most people think one thing about thrift story, but I had got to see another side yeah. of it. So from there, I just felt led. I felt led to start a thrift store. Mm -hmm. And so it went from an idea that I had a thought transfer and put it on paper and then I just started building it. Yeah. And so I said, well, how? I can't get a store yet. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Credit's bad. Don't got no money. I can't get a store. So how can I live this out? Well, I can definitely use a free app. Mm -hmm. I can definitely take a picture. It cost me nothing to start a PayPal account. And that's how I got started. I wow. would find different products, take a picture, post it on Instagram, write a short description, how much, how much shipping is. If you want it, PayPal link is in the bio. Well, not even a link. But my uh, email address so they can, mm. you know, go pay me on PayPal. Mm -hmm. I love that story. Reminds me of the Nasty Gal story. Oh. Do you know the Nasty Gal story? I don't. Okay, it's a girl who started a thrift store and did it the same way and okay. started in her living room and would find different pieces at different thrift shops. And she might fix them up a little bit and then put them out there for the world to see. And I'd imagine... You know, because is your face on this this moment? Is this in the beginning when you first went onto PayPal? What did your interface look like? What are you looking no, at at home? <laughs> I was um, at first. I mean, it was back. It was very basic. So it was just you know, email the pictures that I had on my account. It weren't they weren't even me. You might have saw my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't mm -hmm. me. It was pictures of the products. I mean, you could hear me through the captions sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'll share a story. 
Um, I think the first time I ever posted a picture was I was at Dollar Tree mm. and I saw this sign, you know, the open and close sign. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and this one sign, because they're usually red, mm-hmm. but this one sign was like a teal color, which was the color of my, of it was called What a Deal Thrift Store at the time. What a deal. What a deal. What okay. a deal thrift store. He actually helped me with the name. Oh, the other name was sweet. No good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was the other name? Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> so there's called, somebody who can't figure out their name right now. Okay. Well, it was called Independent Shopper. That's cute. I'm I into, like all it. these independent women out here shopping. But okay. But okay, maybe. But anyway. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I just took a picture. Oh, yeah. So they would hear me through the caption. Mm-hmm. Like once in a while, I would share my story. The first picture I shared, okay, now I remember where I was at. Yeah, it was a teal. Yeah, so I, it was a teal open sign mm-hmm. and the little chain on it. And I remember um, I was outside of my in law's house with this sign. And I don't know if he, my husband held the phone or one of my children or how I got the video. But I just recorded and shared how I found this sign and how it inspired me. And I said, I might not have the store, the physical store yet, but, you know, but I will. And in the meantime, you know, we're open. And I just share that. And I and that was the first time I think it was a short video. Mm. First time I really showed my face and shared what I was doing, yeah. like with people that I knew. As OK, well. you mean like with your friend group? On Instagram? Yeah, or? my friend group at the time was most friends and family on Facebook. Because mm-hmm. the account that I started for my business, nobody knew it was me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that story. And there's so many people having that story right now. Yeah. Like, this is my first post. I'm at a Dollar Tree. I'm going to get creative and figure something out to do. But you said you weren't really thinking, let me be creative and figure something out. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So my journey into entrepreneurship, it was never planned. hmm it was, it wasn't, the Holy Spirit was strategic for me. Yeah. And then I finally learned from the Holy Spirit and now I got the strategy. Yeah. That's how my process has been. It's been the whole, you know, between the scriptures, the Holy Spirit lead, guiding and directing me. And then I'm like, okay, I'm onto something. Mm-hmm. Then I will go learn and get yeah. the confirmation through learning, whether, yeah. you know, it's an ebook course or whatever. But yeah, the Holy Spirit has been very strategic in my life. I love that. That's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. That's you just right. got to follow lead. Yeah, I I didn't I, I never wanted a record deal, hmm. never wanted to be so I never had any dreams of being famous. It just wasn't on my mind ever. Um, I went to school for like classical training and jazz, and I just liked music. And I was from New York, so I figured maybe I'll be in an opera show or or do you know whatever. Um, my first major was teaching, so I hmm. I never had any of this. And when it was time to get a record deal, I was just like, who? I remember that I walked into the record label and I got signed the day I walked in. And um, at the time I was singing background for Donnie McClurkin at church on Sundays. And so I wasn't really thinking on Friday, I'm going to have this record deal. I remember walking into pastor's office and being like, I got a record deal with this label called, and I was so nervous to say the label, kind of like the same way you were nervous to say independent. Like, you know what I mean? (laughs) And I'm like, it's called Def Jam. Do you know, like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on a Sunday. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? I remember moments where, like, one of my first after Sunday moments was walking. Jay-Z wanted me to do a hook on one of his songs. My cousins were from Brooklyn. I was like, I don't know one Jay-Z song. They were like, go pick up his albums on your way to the city. <laughs> I go to Barnes and Nobles in my church clothes because this is where I'm going to get my music. And I get the mm. Blueprint album. I listen to the whole thing on the way to the studio. And all I'm thinking is... What does Jay-Z need today? Because mm. sometimes when we're walking into a space that God is sending us, we just got to look around and see what the need is. That part. I had yeah. no idea what Jay-Z, he's Jay-Z. Yeah. You know, his girlfriend is Beyonce. So I'm walking into this huge studio, this special place that I know nothing about. Mm. And I'm just like, okay, kind of honestly, Lord, what? would you have me to do here? Yeah. Do you know? And sometimes when you walk in with a Lord, what would you have me to do in your spirit? People don't know why they respond to you in a certain way. Mm, he starts, yeah. does that make sense? It like, does. does has it happened for you? Yeah. Yeah. You walk into a room, you don't know why people are like, I'm going to put down my weed. Yeah. I'm going to put, yeah. I'm hide the, hide the alcohol. Chrisette's mom is here. And it was little moments like that where I was like, God is with me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is a, a thing. standard that mm-hmm. comes with it. But sometimes you don't even have to say anything. You don't. Yeah. So I think people sometimes are so petrified to bring their faith-based life into the world, yeah. into the market, into the atmosphere. 
because they feel like they have to make an announcement. Excuse me, I'm saved and full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, excuse me, God is with me. <laughs> like, if he's really with you, we'll know. Yeah. We'll know from the way you act. We'll yeah, know from how fruit. you treat people. Yeah. The fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, a lot of my clients say, well, hey, I'm faith based. Does it mean I have to post scriptures on my page? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. It, it just depends where you're at. Now, I'm very loud and bold with my faith. Right. But there's people, you know, his spirit is within you. How mm -hmm. you live. Your life is a witness. Yeah. There's been times where I won't even know the person. I won't say a thing. It's just how I carry myself. It's just the spirit of God. And someone said, girl, what church you go to? Mm -hmm. I know you go to church. Didn't say a word. Didn't know them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So his spirit dwells within us mm -hmm. and the glory shines and radiant, radiates through us. How can women get in contact with you and what are you willing to give them? So since we talked about Instagram, mm -hmm. you can definitely contact me on Instagram. So on my personal page is at Mart hello Martina Davis. And then on my business page is her marketing plan co CO. So you can de definitely reach me out there mm -hmm. as well as I'm going to just say it before therapy call. That's my life coaching. Mm -hmm. And what are you giving them? What are you willing to give them? Sometimes we get into the market and we're like, I'm here. And everybody asks someone, I'm like, and you're like, nope. Yeah. Nope. So what's the thing that you say yes to for other women? So I give them confidence. I give them reassurance. I empower them. Mm -hmm. And I really pull out what's already there. I love it. So we can come hang out with you on social media. We can come hang out with you on your website. I, by the way, um, her therapy co when I because the first place I went was to your marketing page. Then I was like, I started looking at your bios in each like, <laughs> and I was like, what they call a multi like what do you call it now a multipreneur. Yeah, I was like she and and when you look at the whole story of it, it's very clear that you want people to know who they are, not be afraid of their faith, and bring that outside. Like yeah. if I had to sum, if I, from the outside looking in, were to say, this is who Martina is, she wants people to be confident and know who they are. She wants people to be, feel safe with their, their gifting, the things yeah. that they have. And she wants them to feel brave enough to show other people. You got it. Yeah. So that's why I was so excited to talk with you today. Cause there are women, obviously because of your success, you know that there are women who need that. Yeah. And so I love the pain points that you reach. Yeah. It's Thank beautiful. You. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Everything that you've been praying for.